Question, what do these three images have in common? The answer will lead us on a series of thoughts and questions that might be able to explain a growing trend of dissatisfaction towards Minecraft's more recent features and updates. Or better worded, a contributing force that has put negative pressure on the game's development. My last discussion video was mostly about the Trails and Tales update. We also touched on the history leading up to 1.20, as well as ideas to help make the next update better. In all of that research and thoughts, something else became rather clear, which I decided merited its own video that you are currently watching. So I'm not going to linger on the proposed mystery and turn it into a big deal. It's not. These images are the, air quotes, promotional art from previous updates. 1.5, redstone update. 1.7, the update that changed the world. And 1.8, bountiful update. All three of these updates were released before the Microsoft takeover. Using the Internet Wayback Machine, we can see the original posts from that time on the Mojang website, and for the most part, this was how they communicated these updates, a relatively small and casual blog post outlining new additions with little fluff or hype to be found. And of course, we can't forget the classic trailers made by Hat Films on Mojang's now rebranded YouTube channel. This is something we will come back to soon. From the beginning to now, the community around the game has always played a huge role in the game's success, mostly due to how the nature of content made with Minecraft also promotes it. Today, the scales have moved somewhat, with increasing activity on Mojang's half when it comes to promoting the game. In the early days, it was mostly YouTubers and community-created content that would inform everyone to what's what in the latest big release or new snapshot. As I already mentioned, update trailers for the game were also fan-made. I believe Hat Films handled most of the trailers from 2011 during the beta updates up to the pretty scary update and the end update on Xbox 360 in 2013. So you might see where I'm going with this. Obviously things have changed since those nostalgic years now passed us. It's in this change that we may find a cause for some of the game's current woes. But first let's take a closer look at the timeline between then and now. The Minecraft YouTube channel is a really great resource for seeing these changes visually over time. It follows a similar trajectory as many other YouTube channels, improving thumbnails and presentation, streamlining the content and increasing the production value to the point where a full team of people now produce the videos seen on the channel, a path many YouTubers have taken from humble origins. In 2016, two years after Microsoft brought Mojang, you can see the shift begin. Trailers for Bedrock Edition map packs on the marketplace roll out to the channel, many of which can be found between the Exploration update and the World of Color update. A year later, the promotion cycle for Minecraft Earth begins with additional content not seen before. And then there is the mob vote. Notice which one has the least amount of views. How curious. Then in 2018, more Minecon hype followed by the update Aquatic trailer and the biome chooser vote came along too. You may notice increasing thumbnail clarity and also a tagline text. It's in 2019 that we start to see interim content between the previous standards, interviews with developers and community figures, as well as our first April Fool's trailer, known as Minecraft 3D. Fast forward another couple of years and we see the Ask Mojang series and top 10 lists, which is very much modelled on the Minecraft videos made by the community. These are where facts and knowledge about the game are assembled into lists, a very popular format at the time, and I've even made some myself. The rhythm of content has remained pretty consistent since then. There has, however, been a noticeable uptick in teasers, explainers, and excitement videos linked directly to the content inside the updates, starting with the 1.19 Wild update, but really exploding with 1.20. Although I haven't analysed Minecraft's social media presence in the same way as the YouTube channel, my own organic experience through covering updates and snapshots has led me closely following their Twitter account tweets and Minecraft.net posts. I've noticed the same thing, an uptick in posts and media to create engagement and excitement around the game. This became very apparent recently with a ton of promotional material for Trails and Tales coming through the official Twitter account. These observations have led me to the question this video is about. Making all of this well-produced content takes time, resources, and more importantly, coordination. It has become somewhat of a trend since the Never update, the big Minecraft updates to release in June, just in time for the holidays. 
A good business move no doubt, getting the hype for the game revived in time for a large portion of its player base to spend their increased free time on. This is a far cry from the casual attitude Mojang had over a decade ago. Updates would drop somewhat out of the blue with very little attention given to the marketing machine that has now been built around the game. Of course, not long after 1.20's release, the summer celebration sale arrives to cash in on the Trails and Tales excitement. So what's the issue? All this increased marketing around the game is highly coordinated, with deadlines to meet and promotional content to produce in time. The question is, how does this affect game development? Deadlines can create pressure and time constraints that could lead to features being cut if they are not ready in time. Marketing needs may also impact the demands put on developers, not only to progress the game as they see fit, but to hit certain demographics and audiences with features that suit, for example, a cuteness factor, something for the kids, or an easily marketable addition that feeds into a growing promotional cycle. These are, of course, questions, not accusations. Mojang have every right to promote their game however they see fit. The issue is that some of these aspects are clearly linked, the summer release date a seemingly self-evident one. With these links, an increased demand in one area surely affects the other to some extent, that area of concern being the game's development. This has led me to wonder, and of course ask all of you, if this might be a contributing factor to the recent rocky times within our community. Setting aside the drama of chat reporting, account migration and selective EULA enforcements, is the game lacking direction due to these external factors and thus leading to updates receiving a mixed response? If Mojang were to focus an update entirely on stability, quality of life changes, or tackle fundamental systems like inventory management, would this be allowed? It's certainly harder to market small features and increased game performance over new blocks and mobs. But is that actually what the majority of Minecraft's player base want? In terms of numbers, the game seems to be doing fine on its current course, but for how long? And as someone who follows the development closely, I do want to point out there are consistently under the hood performance changes as well as tweaks, changes and fixes that can make a big difference. I'm not suggesting there is any slack in this department. Minecraft is clearly increasing its marketing strategy and it's probably paying off. However, this game succeeded on its merits in the past without such coordinated campaigns and the question should be asked, is it necessary? For example, Team Fortress 2 is another long-standing game, actually older than Minecraft as it was released in 2007. It's also been continuously updated over the years, completely for free. Much like Mojang back in the day, the latest update was announced via, you guessed it, a blog post. Lots of text outlining the changes and not even a single image. This update brought 14 new maps to the game and an entirely new game mode, the first in seven years. Valve is not the only company lacking big promotion and marketing efforts. If one were to look around, we could probably find a whole range of approaches with varying success. My conclusion is a simple one. Minecraft's visibility and success has always come from its community. If the recent wobble of mixed reception has anything to do with the obvious increased coordination of content and marketing, it might just be wise to ditch the strategy. The long-term goal should be sustainability, keeping old players interested and attracting new ones. To achieve that, the updates need to reach a certain level of quality that the developers should be given the time to fully explore. Split updates and dragged out features to reach deadlines may have compromised what could have been. So that's the video. Please do share your thoughts with a comment if you want to add to this conversation. And if you like this format of video and want to see more, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Your contribution there will enable me to put more time and money into these videos. So thanks for considering, and I'll see you soon with another.